is happening my youtube family of course it is your boy b new coming at y'all this thursday morning uh bright and early thursday morning i just want to first and foremost send out positive vibes to everybody good vibrations to all uh had a hectic day the past couple days uh just really been grinding going at a few things so i know yesterday on the show yesterday uh you know i was discussing the lakers game uh previously you know and basically uh was kind of getting into the topic of kevin durant and shannon sharp and all the events that transpired around them and their use of their social media and uh i had to go take care of some some things so i got interrupted so basically kind of want to get back to that topic and i know some of you were saying you know wanted me to go ahead and address the situation as far as how i feel about kevin durant uh, his use of social media and the way he's handled himself. So we all know, and I don't know if you saw, but on the on the uh, a, a few shows ago, maybe last week, whenever I discussed it, uh, I actually took Kevin Durant's side when it came to the Michael Rappaport incident because I felt like what they were doing was behind closed doors, and for Michael Rappaport to, you know, air out some dirty laundry, so to speak, you know. It was kind of a bad mood to me. That's that's something that I don't really fully understand, you know, because I'm more of a person. And I know everybody is different, but I never the type, you know, people, they jump on social media all the time with their problems and stuff like that and then on social media. To me, I'm just a person that's going to keep things behind closed doors. If it's a problem within a relationship or a problem within the family or a problem with anything, there's nothing wrong with going on social media and soliciting uh, maybe some advice sometime or prayer or, you know, positive words of encouragement. I'm not saying that's anything wrong with that. And I'm not saying it's wrong with people that do go out and put all their business out on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter or whatever. But, you know, to each his own. But my thing is, if you are a celebrity or you are a, I won't even say celebrity, if you are a, a public figure, if you are a public figure, even you know, in, in government, in, in uh, the private sector, or whatever it is, you don't need to be out here uh, doing the things that Kevin Durant is doing. Like, the thing with Shannon Sharp, okay, I can understand if he was misquoted. And I remember seeing that, I want to say on that show that day when Shannon Sharp said that, uh, you know, the, the misquote on KD. And I had thought to myself, well, no, nah, I don't think Kevin Durant said that. And Jason Williams had already... Uh, had already misquoted that and he's from espn by the way so you know if, if an espn employee can make their mistake then i understand that that can happen but when you are uh part of the media then you honestly need to be more careful about what you say because then you creating a false narrative and in this instance and i know a lot of you might not like it but in this instance you know i don't have a problem with kevin durant addressing that now at the point when shay sharp blocked this man then i'm pretty sure Kevin Durant probably got out of line uh, more like what he did with Michael Rappaport. But I can probably, I'd be willing to bet a lot of money. I would be willing to bet probably by my whole account probably that he wasn't talking that shit to Shannon Sharp, that he was talking to Michael Rappaport, talking about meet up and I'll spit in your face and slap you. Because he's going to pick and choose who to say that to. You know, like he'll, he'll say that to Michael Rappaport, but I guarantee he's not saying that to old Unc because I think Shannon Sharp might just beat that ass even though like Shannon said I'm not gonna lose my job going back and forth with you and I don't mean I don't think what Shannon Sharp meant was I'm not gonna lose my job because of what I'm gonna say to you but I think it's more so what I'm gonna do to you because when you raised by a certain code and, and people come to come at you a certain way then at some point you cross the line to where you got to go ahead and handle your business as a man and the thing is with Kevin Durant, you know, we all know his history with the burner accounts. Uh, we see how he handled the, the, the Michael Rappaport situation. Like truth be told, I, I took his side in the sense and where I felt like Michael Rappaport shouldn't be uh, airing his dirty laundry. But at the end of the day, I just feel like Kevin Durant is way too sensitive and just really cares too much like about what people say. You understand what I'm saying? Do y'all know how many people threatened my life and man, none came up to me talking crazy because of my 
little viral video about LeBron James. You know how many people who love Kobe Bryant or love Michael Jordan who really sent me inboxes and said this and that and I mean saying all kind of shit to me. You understand what I'm saying? Saying things to me, threatening me, uh, you know, uh, just insulting me, insulting my intelligence. You know what I mean? And I pick and choose too. Like nine times out of 10, I'm not gonna respond to negativity because what? once you get my age, you understand, you done been through a few things and that's something that I've done. So, you know, when people's negative towards you and you're negative back towards them, what kind of positive outcome is that gonna bring? Now, I know in math, I want to say a negative time, a negative is a positive. It's been a long time since I did some math. That might be right. But I'm telling you, in a situation like this, especially with emotions involved and different things are involved, what is being negative with somebody else that's being negative with you gonna bring? Is it, is it gonna bring about change? Is it going to bring about changing somebody else's mind, heart, or opinion about the subject matter that you discussing or arguing about? Is it going to, uh, you know, help help you guys bond or grow closer? No, it's going to be another negative situation. So a lot of times you just block that out, you know, and you cannot change people's minds, you know, whether they are racist or whether they are uh, just ignorant uh, or whether they just have a different opinion than you. So a lot of times, you know, it's just like somebody say Michael Jordan the GOAT and they want to cuss me out and all that. I don't even got time to listen to it because unless you can come to me with an educated, you know, opinion as to why you feel that way, then why would I even waste my time with a smooth brain? You understand what I'm saying? So the thing is why I just don't get why Kevin Durant feels the need to respond to everybody and then to the point to where he has to get a burner account. Like you care entirely too much what other people think about you. You really care entirely too much. And I understand being in the public eye and coming under scrutiny uh, could probably be a very difficult thing. And then you want to get facts straight. But you understand now when he tweeted out, uh, when he tweeted out, uh, well, Shannon, you got to write uncle on here drunk again. Get your drunk uncle. It's disrespectful, man. You understand what I'm saying? Like, if you disagree with what he's saying, and he misquoted you, how about sending him an inbox and say, hey, hey, Shannon, uh, I never said that. I understand your opinion that you love LeBron and, and that's what you, you know, most time on your show, you hailing LeBron as the GOAT, you know, but at the end of the day, please please just don't misquote me, man. I wouldn't mind if you could go back on there and, uh, and correct that. You know, I wouldn't mind if you can go back on there and correct that uh, on the show the next day and just say that, you know, you misquoted me and, and uh, maybe, you know, some some to that extent. But instead, you know, he go the 13 year old route, you know, as usual, he go the 13 year old route and I'll get your drunk uncle this and that. Now in Kevin Durant mind, let me just tell y'all something because I study character too. So uh, in Kevin Durant's mind, he feels like, well, Shannon Sharp, you know, saying this to millions of people. So now I have to expose him to millions of people. And he feel like, well, he's demeaning me by saying this, although it's just an opinion, uh, then I'm gonna demean him. Well, the thing about it is, Shannon Sharp has a job in the media. And that's what his job is to do, to go to work and talk about sports and critique athletes and critique decisions and to analyze games. Kevin Durant, your job is to play some damn basketball. You too worried about the wrong thing. Get out on the court and do something and prove it. You went to another team and got some ships and now you mad that nobody respect you. You won't respect you, earn it. If you won't respect you, earn it. Don't nobody give it to you. Every bit of respect I ever got in my life, I had to earn it. Didn't nobody walk up to me, be new. Here's my respect. Especially sometimes when you're in a situation. And I can tell you about plenty of them, but I won't get into that. But Kevin Durant, get your ass out on the court and play some basketball. Now you want to play against Minnesota without Carl Anthony Towns. Knowing that Carl Anthony Towns. Knowing that Carl Anthony Towns. Mother. 
had passed away a year before and he was not gonna be playing on the anniversary of the day that his mother passed. So he took some time off because he was emotionally distraught. Why are you taking time off? Why are you taking time off? But you wanna come out against Minnesota, a team that you could have easily beat without the likes of a Kevin Durant. But then you wanna not play. Then Aldridge, Blake Griffin, everybody not playing and you not worried about seeding. Well, you better wake up and recognize what's going on around you because come playoff time, when when if Philly get the number one spot and, and, and they only got to play teams like Atlanta, you understand, or Charlotte, or maybe New York, if they get in. Meanwhile, you have to play teams like Miami or Boston or uh, uh, Miami just to even try to get to Philly. You understand what I'm saying? But playoff seeding doesn't matter, but you, you lost a tiebreaker game by sitting Kevin Durant. Oh, he needed some rest. That's garbage. It wasn't even the second night of a back-to-back. -back. I mean, it's just straight garbage, and it's disrespect to the league. It's disrespect to the association. And and y'all going to sit back and say uh, uh, later, oh, well, we you, you're going to regret what you're doing. That's all I'm saying. You're going to wish you was building some continuity on the floor. You think that you're so great. And see, somebody told me a long time ago. Somebody told me a long time ago and taught me a lesson at an early age. And I'm glad I, I, I took it and I listened to it. My daddy told me, be humble and you will be lifted up. You understand what I'm telling y'all? If you humble, then you will be lifted up. But see, you know who not humble? Kyrie Irving is not a humble person. See, the Brooklyn Nets think they shit don't stink. But let me tell y'all something. It's funky as hell. It's funky as hell. So they better wake up and recognize that they better get their stuff together and they think it's just going to be a waltz to the finals. Now, I'm going to go ahead and tell y'all something. I'm just going to be straight up honest with you. I do feel like with Harden, KD, and, and Kyrie together, they coming out the East. I do feel that. Because that's that's the talent that, that's been assembled yet again. And who's to say that if Kevin Durant wins the championship, you're not going to be the best player on the team just because people say it doesn't make it true. Because if Harden the one to make it tick, if Harden the one that's getting the MVP, if Harden get the final MVP, then what is that going to say about you? It's going to be another stain on your legacy, BDP. It's going to be another stain on your legacy. But the thing about it is, you talking about winning the East, you still gonna have to come to the West. And when you come to the West, you gonna have to see LeBron James! And you think he's not sitting back tickled at this old bullshit. So maybe LeBron, you know what? Maybe that weird Skip Bayless, maybe he did have a point the other day in saying that LeBron might be taking a little bit of rest. Cause that man walking around in sneakers, he probably looking at the record. I guarantee if them Lakers was in the ninth or 10th spot, you might be seeing LeBron James lacing them boys up. But he said, hey, Portland losing, Dallas losing, which was a hell of a game last night, the Dallas and the Memphis game. I might have to make a whole nother separate video about that, but that was a heartbreaking loss last night. But let me not get off subject because I'm still talking about this damn Kevin Durant and LaMarcus Aldridge and everybody you don't want to play, then so be it. But tonight, it's going to be a real game because guess what? And I hate I'm back down in these damn, back down south again and not out in LA. Well, I miss me some LA. I, I'm going back real soon again, but uh, because they letting the fans in tonight. 2,000 fans will be let in. And I'm sorry, y'all, for not going live from the Staples Center because they was doing some kind of construction and had all the stuff up. You couldn't see the statues. You couldn't see anything. So, But anyway, at the end of the day, I'm just like, man, the fans will be back. And what more fitting team to be playing with the fans uh, and the Lakers than with uh, playing the Boston Celtics. So we're looking forward to that matchup tonight. Uh and that's something we can talk about more. I come back this evening with a pregame show, maybe an analysis, take a look at what the spreads are and things of that nature. But anyway, as always, this is your boy B New. I'm saying right on to the real. I'm saying much love to the haters. Uh, been working on this merch, y'all. But unfortunately, 
YouTube got a new rule until I have 10,000 subscribers, I cannot get on my merch and I do have some fire merch I'm trying to put out. So uh, let's get these subscribers up for your boy. Uh, so stay tuning in every day. I'm gonna try to keep coming with the morning show. Uh, let me know in the comments what other what else you'd like me to talk about. I haven't forgot about you, my guy, for the Zion uh, Williamson video. So anyway, peace and much love to everybody I'm down with and everybody that's out there that's under the sound of my voice. Positive vibrations to you. Right on to the real and much love to the haters. I'm out.